Hey guys, what's up? I'm John Merritt from borntoproduce.com and welcome to the second video in our free bootcamp course for beginners. I'm going to teach you about what I call beat tracing. If you don't know how to make your own beats from scratch or you're looking for some inspiration to get you going, then beat tracing can really help. The principle is very similar to using tracing paper to copy a picture. You place the tracing paper over the picture, and as you can see the picture through the tracing paper, you can easily copy the picture that's underneath it. Well, I'm going to show you how to do a similar thing with a drum loop. Using the simple method, we copy the rhythm of a drum loop using our own samples to create our own unique loop. Of course, there's nothing at all wrong with using loops, it's just that the advantage of using one-shots over loop is that you have complete control over every individual sound that makes up the loop. So if you want to change the dynamics of an individual hit, or you want to add an effect to just one element of the loop, then you can do so without affecting all of the sounds. So for this tutorial, I'm going to trace a drum and bass loop, but this technique will work with any drum loop from any genre, whether it's dubstep, house, rock, or whatever. Just note that the simpler the drum beat is that you're trying to trace, the easier it will be. It will also work much better if the loop you're tracing has no other elements in it, like guitar, bass, or synth. It's much better if it's just pure drums. So I want to bring in the samples I'm going to use. So I'm just going to my audio pool, control P, and import and the loop I'm going to be tracing is this one so I'll just bring that in first okay so as this is a loop and I want Cubase to stretch it to the tempo of the track I'm just going to click on the little musical tab there for the DMB loop now when I drag that onto a fresh space in the arrangement window you can see that it's already stretched it to the same tempo as Cubase Unfortunately, at the moment, though, the tempo in Cubase is a bit slow for drum and bass. It's only at 120 BPM. Yes, that's definitely much too slow. So that being the case, I'm going to go up here and rather than have it on tempo track, I want to have that on tempo fix. And you'll see there that the number, the BPM per minute actually changes. It's a bit grayed out there because you can't change it when it's in tempo track. And I change it to tempo fixed and then we can change that. So I'll change it to 165. And you can see that Cubase has automatically kept the loop in time with the tempo change. And there you go, it's much better. So I'm just going to change the color of this track. This is the loop that we're going to be copying. So if I just go over to the colored area and hold either Alt or Control, it doesn't matter which, then it'll bring up this little color palette and I can just choose a different color for it. And I'm just going to drag that up to the top as well. So before we actually get to tracing this loop and bringing in the other samples, we just want to have a quick listen to it and decide what is actually in the loop. So after zooming in a little bit, I'm just going to play that through. And as you can hear, it's a very basic drum loop. So it's just made up of like three elements. There's a kick, which it starts with. We can hear that quite clearly. And then the snare, and then we've got a little hat rhythm in the background, but it's very simple. So there's only three elements in there, kick, snare, and a hat. So I'm gonna to go to my audio pool, control P again, and import my samples. So I wanna select all the samples here that I want, which is one is the deep kick. And if I hold down control, I can also select at the same time the hat and the snare. So with those three selected, click on open, OK. And then I just want to bring in the deep kick and stick that on the deep kick track. So we can see when we look at the waveform that the kick itself, we know that is the first thing to actually fall on this loop. So we can see it has a very unique sort of waveform and you can see that being repeated later on in the loop. So we can tell just by looking at this loop where the kicks fall. So what I'm gonna do, I can see that my this first kick is in the right place. So I'm just gonna hold down Alt and drag my kick across to copy it to the same position of the kick in the loop. And I'm going to carry on going through the loop and just copying the kick to where the kick falls in the loop. So on this one, I just have to shorten the kick a bit. And again, I just want to drag in that right hand envelope just to make sure there's no clicks or pops from shortening the audio. And again, I just want to copy that so it's falling where that kick is in the original loop. And again, and then this kick, I have to shorten it even more. That's fine. I've already dragged in that right hand envelope, so no problem. And then we've got one last kick at the very end there. 
and I will just shorten that kick all the way in. So there, that was simple. We've just literally copied the position of the kick from the original loop. So I'm going to do the same thing with the snare. So I'll go to my audio pool and bring in the snare to the track. Now we know that that's, if we listen to the loop, that that sound right here is the snare. And once again, it's got its own very unique sort of shape to it that you can see visual shape. So I'm just going to copy my snare so it falls on exactly the same positions. It's very simple, it's just on every other beat. So I'm just going to play our original loop and then switch to our new kick and snare just so we can hear that it's in the same pattern. And there you can hear, so we've just literally copied the rhythm or the placements of the kick and the snare. So there's one last element in there that we haven't copied, and that's the hat. So the hat is slightly harder to tell where it falls in the loop. So it's much better, instead of using the visual representation, we just need to listen for it. And in this case, it's very simple. You can just hear. So it's basically falling on every single beat and off beat. So I'm just going to drag our hat into our track. Once again, it's a little bit quiet there, so I'm just going to grab that middle control point and raise it up a bit. And then I'm going to copy this so it's actually on every single beat and off beat. So again, let's have a listen through to our original loop and then I'm going to switch to our new loop. Handy little tip for you if you don't want to go into the mixer every single time you want to change the volume of something. When you click on the actual track up here in the inspector, you have a little volume control which is the same as the one in the mixer. So you can just use that for a quick volume change. And there you go, you can see that we have now copied the exact rhythm of that loop but with our own nice sounds. And now, of course, we got the benefit of not only just sounding better and more appropriate for whatever track it is that you're working on, but now you have the added bonus that you have complete and utter control over every single element within the loop. 